Hello and welcome to Sky Transition for Value, Sky's Transradio Quality Initiative to maximize the value of PCI. This initiative is supported by Medtronic, Terumo, and CSI. My name is Amar Ardati from the University of Illinois at Chicago and the Jesse Brown VA. Today I'll be discussing coronary arthroctomy, when, why, and how. This activity is supported by unrestricted educational grants from Medtronic, Terumo, and CSI. Sky gratefully acknowledges this support while taking responsibility for all content. I personally have performed consulting and educational services for cardiovascular solutions that produces the Diamondback atherectomy catheter. Today, I'd like to review with you the indications and use of coronary atherectomy, how to anticipate the presence of coronary calcification that may impact PCI and require the use of atherectomy, how to plan for a successful procedure, what atherectomy event modalities are currently available in the market, and how to anticipate complications and manage them in your practice. I'd like to start with a case that I encountered a few years ago. This is a 55-year-old gentleman with diabetes and stage renal disease and angina who presents um, uh, for evaluation and is found to have reduced LV systolic function. His angiogram shows a severely calcified proximal and mid-LAD lesion, and he's currently on reasonable medical therapy. Thinking about a patient like this makes me think when to consider a uh, coronary atherectomy. Severe coronary calcification can be an obstacle to procedural success, and it limits the ability to deliver stents and balloons. Moreover, procedurally, the risk of coronary dissection and perforation is increased as aggressive balloon dilatation is attempted through these uh, non-yielding lesions. Inability to uh, uh, treat or expand the lesion may result in poor stent expansion with the attendant risk of restenosis or thrombosis. Thus, atherectomy is indicated for plaque modification to facilitate optimal PCI. When thinking about patients as they come to the lab and trying to anticipate their need, uh, their, uh, their, their uh, risk of having coronary calcification, risk factors that must be think thought about are uh, age, uh, diabetes status, and the presence of chronic kidney disease. The angiographic definition of severe calcification is one in which radial opacities are seen without cardiac motion before contrast injection, uh, usually affecting both sides of the lumen. This is highly specific, but not quite sensitive. And in fact, in intravascular studies, uh, comparing angiograms uh, to uh, an intravascular definition of severe calcification, um, the presence of calcification appears to be uh, more prevalent, with severe calcification on intravascular imaging being defined as an arc of greater than 27 270 degrees. Adjunctive imaging is very helpful in the management of coronary calcification, where IVIS shows a very bright border with poor penetration behind the innermost layer of calcium, and OCT showing a more subtle but sharp border with good definition of the plaque behind the calcified uh, uh, area. This slide from neural intervention shows a very nice comparison of IVIS, OCT, and histology all in the same area of the lesion uh, and describes the uh, differences in imaging uh, quality between these modalities. We'll go back to our patient here. And uh, we did an OCT before we started. And you can see in the more proximal lesion, the patient has nearly circumferential coronary calcification with the bright border at the intimal layer, uh, whereas the second lesion, the more medial, uh, the more uh, mid vessel lesion, Again, shows calcification, how it is, however, it is deeper in the vessel and not quite uh, abutting the, the intimal layer. When thinking about uh, performing uh, PCI in highly calcified lesions, it's helpful to plan for success, uh, especially uh, uh, anticipating the need for good guide support and uh, delivery system. Um, the most atherectomy can be performed via a six French system though a seven French system can be considered for added uh, support or to facilitate large caliber bifurcation work. When I operate from the radial approach and when I'm treating left coronary artery lesions, I typically use an XB or an EBU system, which allows for back wall support. I rarely will use a JL guide shape unless treating a truly isolated osseal left main lesion. For the RCA, most, many lesions can be treated with a JR4. However, if the need for support is anticipated, an AL.75 or AL1 uh, can offer robust support but requires diligent attention to avoid proximal vessel trauma. 
Wire selection is equally critical. While initial crossing can be performed with any workhorse or crossing wire and then exchange for an atherectomy wire, following atherectomy, I feel that it is helpful to change for a delivery wire such as a Wiggle or Iron Man in order to allow for uh, uh, optimal delivery of equipment. Currently in the United States, there are three atherectomy modalities on the market, rotational atherectomy, orbital atherectomy, and laser atherectomy. With all three, uh, it is possible to use uh, six French compatible systems uh, for most cases. Um, the rotational atherectomy and orbital atherectomy system require the use of proprietary wires in order to uh, perform the atherectomy procedure. Rotational atherectomy that has a long history uh, of use um, uh, uh, involves the principle of a uh, burr with a leading edge uh, cutting diamonds. Uh, the device rotates at high speed and cuts during advancement using a gradual pecking motion. Um, the orbital atherectomy device is asymmetric, uh, which results in a larger ablative arc than the crossing profile of the device. And the device can have two speeds of rotation in order to change the ablative arc uh, size. Uh, the device has uh, cutting features on both, the, both sides of the burr, which allows for uh, treatment during advancement and withdrawal. Unlike rotational atherectomy, which is uh, a treatment modality using a pecking motion, orbital atherectomy is accomplished by gentle flow advancement through the lesion at approximately one millimeter per second. Finally, laser atherectomy, which can be used with a standard workhorse wire, uses laser energy to evaporate tissue in direct proximity to the device. Similar to orbital atherectomy, flow advancement is critical while maintaining continuous saline irrigation. Back to our patient. Uh, angioplasty uh, was performed following atherectomy, however, showed poor balloon expansion. An angiogram was performed and showed no evidence of dissection, and thus repeat atherectomy was performed. Subsequently, the patient had repeat angioplasty with more optimal expansion. Complications. Uh, most common complication with the use of atherectomy is slow flow. This can be avoided by uh, not using oversized device and using short runs with sufficient pauses in between. Uh, should slow flow be appreciated, intracoronary vasodilators such as adenosine or nitroprusside or calcium channel blockers may be beneficial. Should the patient have systemic hypotension, it should be treated as well. Uh, dissection is a complication that can occur as well and typically occurs when treating uh, highly tortuous vessels. If a dissection is observed following an atherectomy run, it is critical to avoid further atherectomy in order to prevent the propagation of the dissection. Uh, it is equally important to proceed with stenting at this time, especially if there's flow limitation, with care to cover both proximal and distal edges of the dissection. Similar to dissection, perforation tends to occur when treating highly tortuous vessels and may occur when wire bias results in device engagement with the wall rather than the lesion. It's important to gently engage the lesion to avoid perforation. Should perforation occur, one must be prepared to perform uh, balloon tamponade, pericardiosynthesis, and the placement of a cutter stent. In rare circumstances, cardiac surgery is necessary. Uh, device entrapment is a rare but known complication of atherectomy devices. Um, it is important to avoid ending a run distal to the lesion um, and to engage the lesion gently uh, rather than rapidly in order to prevent uncontrolled engagement and slipping past the lesion without actually treating it. Should device entrapment incur, gentle traction of the entire system typically is able to uh, relieve uh, the entrapment However, alternative approaches such as a parallel wire and angioplasty or uh, severe interventions such as cutting the device away from the control arm and advancing in a guideline, a guide extender to the lesion and retracting may be necessary. In rare cases, cardiac surgery may be required. Back to our patient, um, the uh, post-sense angiography appeared optimal. However, on imaging, we noticed there was some evidence of malapposition and uh, eccentric areas of underexpansion in the proximal lesion that required further post dilatation. Our patient did well uh, with a satisfactory final result, um, and clinically, uh, he responded well with the relief of his anginal symptoms and subsequent improvement in his LV systolic dysfunction. 
Coronary calcification is remarkably common and can impact PCI procedural success. Poor lesion modification may result in downstream adverse events and cost. The majority of atherectomy can be performed via radial approaches. Procedural planning should take into account the need for guide and wire support to facilitate optimal PCI. Adjunctive imaging both before and after atherectomy uh, and stenting can help guide procedural planning and optimize results. Complications are rare but known and can be minimized with careful technique.